hope I'm audible. You are, you are, Chief. Thank you. Okay, so bioterrorism is terrorism involving the intentional release or dissemination of biological agents. These agents include bacteria, viruses, insects, fungi, and or, or their toxins that may be in a naturally occurring or a human modified form in much the same way as biological warfare. Further, modern, modern agribusinesses um, vulnerable to anti-agricultural attacks by terrorists and such attack, attacks can seriously damage economy as well as cons consumer confidence. The later destructive activity is called agrobioterrorism as a subtype of agroterrorism. Regards to definition, according to the Interpol, bioterrorism is the deliberate release of viruses, bacteria, toxins, or other harmful agents to cause illness or death in people, animals, or plants. According to the CT CDC in the USA, the bi biology bioterrorism is a biological attack, or bioterrorism is the intentional release of viruses, bacteria, or other germs that can sicken or kill people, livestock, or crops. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, is defined as violent action using living matter such as bacteria to harm or kill people for political reasons. Bioterrorism agents are typically found in nature but could be mutated or altered to increase their ability to cause disease and also make them resistant to current medicines or to increase their ability to be spread into the environment. Biological agents can be spread through the air, water, or in food. They are also attractive to terrorists because they are extremely difficult to detect and do not cause illnesses for several hours to several days. Some bioterrorism agents like small pulse virus can be spread from person to person and some like anthrax cannot. Bioterrorism may be favored because biological agents are relatively easy and inexpensive to obtain, can be easily disseminated and can cause widespread fear and panic beyond the actual physical damage. However, bioterrorism has some important limitations. It is difficult to use a bioweapon in a way that only affects the enemy and not the friendly forces. A biological weapon is useful to terrorists mainly as a method of creating mass panic and disruption to a state or a country. However, technologies have warned of the potential power which genetic engineering might place in the hands of future bioterrorists. Under the current United States law, bioagents which have been declared by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services or the U.S. Department of Agriculture to have the potential to pose severe threat to public health and safety are officially defined as, as select agents. And the CDC categorizes these agents into three groups, A, B, or C and administers the select agent program, which regulates the laboratories which may possess, use, or transfer select agents within the United States. Now for category A, the, the organisms in the category A, these are high priority agents that pose a risk to national security, can be easily transmitted and disseminated. And they also result in high mortality. They have potential for more major public health impact and may cause public uh, panic or require special action for public health preparedness. Now, some of the um, organisms that have been uh, classified into category A include SARS and COVID-19, uh, tular uh, tularemia as a disease condition caused by uh, Francisella tular tularensis bacterium, which can be contracted through contact with four inhalation, injection of contaminated water or insect bites. Um, others include um, anthrax caused by the bacterium Bacillus anthracis. Um, the dispersal of this pathogen among densely populated areas is said to carry less than 1% mortality rate. However, for cutaneous exposure, it carries up to 99% and has higher mortality for untreated inhalational infections. Note that an anthrax vaccine does really exist but requires many injections for stable use. However, when discovered early, anthrax can be cured using antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin, where it has to be identified early. 
So other um, disease conditions and organisms in this group include the smallpox, um, which is also a highly contagious virus. You have virus, you have the botulinum uh, uh, toxin, uh, which is uh, toxin produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. However, we should also note that this toxin is, is used worldwide for cosmetic applications and injections. Other conditions that have been categorized um, um, in the group A include the bubonic plague, uh, which is caused by the Yersinia pestis bacterium. Um, the viral hemorrhagic fever has also come under this class. This includes uh, uh, the members from the Phila viridae family, that's the Marburg virus, Ebola virus, and the Arena viridae family. Examples include the Lassa virus, Machupo virus. Ebola virus disease is partic in particular has caused high fatality rates, ranging from 25 to 90%, with the 50% average. No cure currently exists, although vaccines are in development. <clears throat> I've mentioned the Marburg virus. Now for the category B, <clears throat> agents in this category B are moderately easy to disseminate and have low mortality rates. So the, 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 the severity of these organisms, you know, it goes down as you move from um, group A down. So the organisms in group B include the Brucellia species, species that cause brucellosis, uh, Clostridum prefringes, Salmonella species, Bucorderia malay, uh, Bucorderia pseudo malay that causes meningiosis, Chlamydia sitaki that causes stachosis, Coursiella bonetti that causes Q fever. Uh, so these this disease conditions and organisms can be used for warfare in the hands of you know terrorists. Um, for category C, the category C agents are emerging pathogens that might be engineered for mass dissemination because of the availability, ease of production and dissemination. High mortality rates or ability to cause major health impact. They include the NIFA virus, the hunter viruses. These are the ones I saw in category C. Now, for, regarding response to bioterrorism, we have the planning and the monitoring. Under the planning and monitoring, you have the, um, the, the following components. Number one, preparedness. <clears throat> so uh, providing um, export controls on biological agents are not applied uniformly in all countries. So providing terrorists a, a route of acquisition. Laboratories are working on advanced detection systems to provide early warning, identify contaminated areas, and population at risk and to facilitate prompt treatment. Methods for predicting the use of biological agents in urban areas, as well as assessing the area for hazards associated with the biological attack have been established in major cities. In addition, forensic technologies are working on identifying biological agents, their ge geographical origins, and or their initial source. And efforts include the contamination technologies to restore facilities without causing additional environmental concerns. Early detection and rapid response to bioterrorism depend on close cooperation between public health authorities and law enforcement agencies. However, such cooperation is lacking. So national detection assets and vaccine stockpiles are not useful if the local and state officials do not have access to them. Uh, there is also the implementation of the um, generation three autom automated detection system. This advancement enables action to be taken in four to six hours. All these, uh, these, are, these uh, um, 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 protocols are mentioned in their under preparedness because you have to prepare. You don't wait till the, you know, the act has been carried out. You have to make plans, have plans on ground. So these are some of the components for preparedness. Uh, also, one way in which preparedness is ensured is through exercises that establish preparedness. So they do routine exercises, like for example, we have the anthrax response exercise series uh, 
uh, preparedness tests, which exist to ensure that regardless of the incident, all emergency personnel will be aware of the rule they must be. This is more like um, a drill where they have exercises, you know, they, they, run, they run drills or, or routinely, you know, <clears throat> although not in real life and trust exposure, but they run the drill so that people know what they are supposed to do, how they are supposed to act, how, what they are, who they are supposed to contact in the event of, um, um, of the disease, you know, breaking up. And then also under preparedness, you have the uh, enhancing the technological capabilities of first responders. And this can be achieved through numerous strategies. The first of these strategies was developed by the Science and Technology Directorates of the DHS to ensure that the danger of suspicious powders could be effectively assessed as many dangerous biological agents such as anthrax exist as white powder. This is achieved by testing the accuracy and specificity of commercially available systems used by first responders. And the hope is that all biological harmful powders can be rendered ineffective. Uh, so other aspects of protection against bioterrorism in the United I'm using United States because, um, well, I got more data on United States with regards to bioterrorism than you know other countries. So I'm using them as a you know. So detection and resilience strategies in combating bioterrorism. This occurs primarily through the efforts of the Office of Health Affairs. Uh, a part of the Department of Homeland Security, whose role is to prepare for an emergency situation that impacts the health of the American populace. So they have this uh, BioWatch program in which collection devices are disseminated to 30 high-risk areas throughout the country to detect the presence of aerosolized biological agents before symptoms present in patients. This is significant primarily because it allows a more proactive response to a disease outbreak rather than a more passive treatment of the past. Uh, okay. So there, there is also enhanced equipment for first um, responders. One recent advancement is the commercialization, commercialization of a new form of Tyvex, ammo, which protects first responders and patients from chemical and biological contaminants. There is also a new generation self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA, which has been recently made more robust against bioterrorism. It's like a device you can wear it, it covers your whole body and stops the transmission of the organisms while you know you can also carry out the contamination you know with the protocols. Now all these technologies combine to form what seems like a relatively strong deterrent to bioterrorism. However, New York City as an entity has numerous organizations and strategies that effectively serve to deter and respond to bioterrorism as it comes. Uh, also, training exercises designed for police and first responders to become familiar with techniques and practices should the real incident occur can be carried out to uh, state preparedness training center carry out these training exercises. Participants include the bomb spots, canine handlers, tactical team officers, and emergency medical services. Uh, okay, these are just the uh, other programs. Also, there are novel approaches in biotechnology, such as synthetic biology, which could be used in the future to design new types of biological warfare agents. Special attention has to be laid on future experiments of concern. And this, uh, this would demonstrate how to render a vaccine ineffective. That's, these are areas that people need to pay more attention in the future. You know, and um, it would also confer resistance to therapeutically useful and antibiotics or antiviral um, agents would enhance the virulence of a pathogen or render a non-pathogen. These are these are these are these are possible ways in which this um, synthetic biology can be used to create you know disease um, modification of disease causing organisms, and this. Uh, when all this, when it, when this is created, it could you know, you know result in you know the following factors like increase um, virulence or ineffectiveness to the routine available vaccines and all. Uh, could also increase transmissibility of a pathogen. Could alter a host 
uh, range of pathogen would also could also enable the invention of diagnostic detection tools. So these are areas that we need to work on so that in case this you know, synthetic biological agents are now being used. These are some of the areas we need to look at, you know, to, to prevent, you know, all this from happening. Uh, well, these are just, um, you know, these are just um, other rights of psychopathy, but that's all, that's all that I could. The, I didn't have much data online on biotory, so these were just the ones I could get. So thank you for listening. I don't know thank if you. there are contributions, questions, and all that. Thank you. Sir. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Abu. Uh, well done. Um, we entertain contributions from our colleagues, senior colleagues. Okay, um, Dr. Jibola Sander, go ahead. Good morning, uh, teachers, consultants, and colleagues. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Abu, for this very lucid presentation. Sorry, I just have a little clarification I want to make. Um, I want to understand the question. In your presentation, you put SARS as um, um, category, category A, <laughs> but in our uh, national guide, it's um, a category C as an emerging virus. So I just want to know if we're based in an exam situation and we're asked to categorize um, all of these things. Are we going to put it in A or C? Thank you very much. Um, that was my actually question again. I noted it down. I know he puts SARS and COVID-19 in category A. And as you said, in our notes, he's in category C. So we don't know. Our note was it before the emergence of COVID nineteen? Maybe the arrangement has changed, or this is more recent. I don't know. As you said, we really need him to. Doctor Yahaya, follow you follow the National College. They are the ones yes, that are going to mark. Okay. Okay. Um, they are the ones that are going to score in the exam. It's, we're, not, we're not going to be scored by Google. So please, okay. what the National College has given to you, please take it hook, line, and sinker. Don't okay. whenever you have such controversies, always go with national college. Except they have changed it, then you go with him. But if they've not, it's it's, it's safe that way. If they ask you, oh, where is that material? So I say an audit. If the examiner asks you, wow, but when you see that, once you say it's our audit, they know it's not your fault. They, that that's what they give you. But if you say, oh, I saw it in Google, they just saw it. Do you understand? It's safe when you say it's from the national audit. So they'll listen to you more. So they'll know the errors from them. So what, whenever you have any confusion, please always go with the college. I wanted to quickly um, um, say something so that the contribution can go in that line. So I will thank you for your presentation. But uh, we expected that once you're done with uh, the stuff you've moved, what about the management of these people? That's where the... The college will, will want to focus. This is just a part A, just a part of the discussion. How do you manage these people by bioterrorism? How do you care for them? I don't know if I missed it in your discussion, but I didn't hear anything like that. Okay, okay, Chief. Uh, well, I didn't really go, in, go into the actual management because the actual management will be so much you have to manage these conditions individually individually so that the, well. the 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 exam most likely will focus on management these all these things you just said is just like an intro so that's why we gave you people this topic if they come with any of the bioterrorism there is a principle in management just we have principle in management in um, poison management of poison. There's a general principle of this thing. And it's not much really. You just classify it. Then you just know that specific, if it is this, the common bioterrorism uh, agent, if it is this agent, everybody knows just, if it is this agent, this is what you will do. If it is the specific antidote for this specific, but the general principle of management, there's a general principle of management. And it's not that voluminous really. Something you could have, you know, you could have, um, 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 taking time to study, even if you it was not in your side, but at least you have at least talked about it. Because in the exam, they are not after um, class A category, A category B. They might give you that, but that, that will not be the focus 
of the question. The focus of the question is reject or most of the recalls have been on management. So if they're going to bring something on war, they'll tell you, how will you manage victims of war? As a doctor, you have been made um, so, 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 so part of a committee. You are heading a particular committee and you are asked to manage. So there's only something on management. How will you organize your thoughts, organize the patient and the people that have been affected? So that's actually the crux of the matter. So if we can, um, um, and you've not, uh, uh, you've not done that. So if the contribution can come along that line so that this uh, time will be more fruitful for everyone listening. So if you only if you can make attempt, if uh, then the other people going for the exam can also make attempt. Because if you see this thing exam as Dr. Fatima and Dr. Chitu will see, you won't tell them, oh, please, oh, I did not read it, oh, no. I did not read it. Uh, please, can I come back in this month to answer your question? You will not do that. You will make attempt. So please help us make attempt. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. I wanted to ask you, uh, do you have the material, like maybe article, you know, where this, this are summarized? So it, it would have helped me. You know, you know, this period there, uh, everybody is trying to be as fast as possible. There are so many things to go through. on this thing. The most important material, which is the national guideline. You have it. I sent it to the group and I'm sure I sent it to you. So I said, is it, that, the, is it that book on a guide to national postgraduate medical? Exactly. College? Exactly. The one I have, oh, I don't know if this thing. Okay. In the group, uh, I've uh, sent to the group like how many times because we keep adding. Uh, the one I have, I don't think it has. Uh, it does not have uh, plenty of stuff, so it's just like one page. Oh. I don't know. Maybe my own is. I will send it again. And let's not be let's oh. not. So those going for the exam, since um he's not aware, I don't know if they're going for it. But what I, what I want to make attempt is that general principles of managing such cases. You know, if yeah, now maybe. you are the one, general principles. What would you do? Would you let the victims okay. so that? Yeah, yeah. No, the general me. principle. Okay, Chief, the general principle, if you're saying general principle, first of all, you do ABC of resuscitation and then um, make sure that uh, the environment is safe for you coming in. You may need to protect yourself and then decontamination. You have to decontaminate um, the patient and stop further transmission um, of the disease. Then if the... if um, the condition the is one that will resuscitation. When it comes to things like this, you don't start ABC of resuscitation. You want to take all the people that have been exposed, take them to a safe area. You can't be resuscitating them in, a, in an area that is, you know, that is so congested with the bioterrorism agent. You want to take them, take them away, reduce the exposure. Once you've oh. taken, taken them away from the exposure, you start resuscitating the rescue mission. All those things comes in. So I want those going for the exam to make an attempt. Then if you don't make an attempt, the facilitators are in class. Do support as much as they can. So you can call on your friend to rescue you. Doctor, um, those going for the exam, Dr. Yahaya, Dr. Dahatu, Dr. Jibola, Dr. Marianne, there is other lady, Dr. Nkiruka. Can you guys make an attempt? Thank you, ma, for coming in. Um, ma, before the attempt, I don't know. Um, in the chat box, Dr. Marianne, regarding whether um SARS is in group A or C, she said it's updated in the. It has been updated. I don't know whether in the national guide um material updates that it's now in group E, as he rightly uh, said. So okay, okay that's nice. Colleagues go with national. That's nice. So please, anybody that can help us to itemize steps that we should follow in addressing this bioterrorism, victims of that. As Ma have highlighted, initial step that we have to take them away from the environment. We have to take them to a new environment that is less vulnerable to their exposure. Matt, there is a, from the chat box, Dr. Mahmoud said, 
thanks much for the presentation. Adinav agent gases, it, uh, example serine classified as a bioterrorism agent. Then um, he outlined the management. He said, one, public health notification. Two, confirmation and diagnosis. Three, decontamination, both personal and environment. environment. Then prophylaxis, if indicated, use of chemo prophylaxis. Antitoxins is available, immunization and infection control. That's what he put in the chat box. OK, thank you, Dr. Mamoto. Good morning, Shana ma'am. Mark Sorry, can I make an attempt? Please, you can go ahead. OK, ma'am. So um, I think we can divide it into five phases. The first phase will be the preparedness phase, which will be um, um, taken on by multiple agencies because this is like a worst situation. So in Nigeria, you have the Federal Ministry of Health. You have the National Emergency Management Agency, that's NEMA. You have the um, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, since it's a biological warfare that we are dealing about. You have um, other professionals from the rapid response team, security agencies like the military, the police, the civil defense. And then you have also the um, doctors, the medical bodies in, in that area. So this is the preparedness phase. And um, this is also the phase of first responders after the um, the agent has been released into the air. Already um, prior to this, mock is expected that mock drills would have been performed. People already know what, what uh, their roles are. And then the uh, four S's over here will come into play. The S's are the stuff, the space, the stuff, the space, the um, um, supplies, and staff. So the staff are the um, people I have mentioned. So uh, already the um, 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 the web, the agent has been released. So you, um, um, in the preparedness phase, you are gathering all your people together and you are preparing your team. The next thing is the early warning phase in which surveillance systems um, um, are activated and things like case definitions are are made case definition of the disease. So what do we think this disease, this disease is? What agents, what um, organisms do we think are involved? So a case definition is quickly put in place and then in already, you already created an hypothesis. You are doing all of this as fast as possible. It's not things you are doing with time and you're already interpreting and um, using your epidemiological data and you are using information technology to map out the spread of the disease. Then the next thing is the notification phase where you now want to notify um, other members of the public on um, on what you found out about your hypothesis, how to prevent further spread of this disease, what they need to do to um, avoid the area. You are cordoning off that area as much as you can. And then the final one is, um, and you want to quarantine and isolate those who have been affected. This is in the notification phase. And then once you've identified the, the disease, you already have your case definition. You've already, take, you've already started the appropriate antidotes to this um, 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 to this agent. And then the next thing is the response phase. So in the response phase, you have your mass casualty. Definitely your hospitals are already overflogged. So you want to um, um, implement some of the things that we've seen in the disaster management uh, uh, program. You want to assess the situation. You want to contact the key health personnel who will be responsible for directly treating these um, patients, your infectious disease. Um, department, you want to implement your action plan, which will must have come up out of your hypothesis in terms of um, um, samples to take, treatments to use. In this place, you're already doing things like, okay, patients that you've already triaged your patients, patients that you know would survive, they'll be the ones on the um, higher list of treatments. You're already going to start doing things like accommodation. Accommodation meaning that you will start using um, ventilators for um, uh, you start using anesthesia machine in place of ventilators. You convert your HDU to an ICU because of the fact that um, um, this is not a conventional um, issue. So you are just trying to uh, um, sort of improvise what you have. You are going to be using ICU coronary care nurses to um, handle maybe regular medical emergency cases and all of that. And then the final phase is your recovery phase where you now want to look at um, your, you want to, revise everything you guys have done. You want to see what your response rates were, and then you want to come up with documents to do them um, that will have your do's and don'ts in this AM, 
um, areas of bioterrorism warfare. You want to see how you can prevent such recurrence in the future. And then you want to continue training of your staff. This was just a rough attempt. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Chibola. That was a wonderful attempt. Thank you so much. Um, um, you started well. Thank you so much. Remember, once they give you some of these questions, the first one of the first things you will do is to form a team. This is an emergency situation. You cannot be everywhere. Quickly form a team. Mm -hmm. So one of us will tell us, um, and depending on the bioterrorism agent, it depends on the, but there are people that will always be in the team, but the problem with bioterrorism agent, if it's on that, do the GIT, and the, some like gastroenterologists and the rest, when I start coming, even on the source specialty involved, but there's a general team that so, 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 so person will be made of. So we'll definitely form a team. After forming a team, then the people that will be given different responsibilities because you will not be everywhere. You cannot make it on the course. You will not be the one that will be hopping on helicopters, trying to do rescue mission and the rest. Different res the responsibility will be shared to different persons. So, Doctor, I don't know, one of you has to help us here too. Uh, team. Team. How would you make up your team? Can I start with the basic ones, people that must be on the team, your team members, composite team members, then other people depend on the subspecialty involved. Matt, she wants to talk more. Chitu, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so um, in putting together a team against um, bioterrorism, of course, everything starts with um, a threat. Usually, preparation for a possible bioterrorism will start from the point that there's a threat, or maybe there's an intelligence report that says that there's about to be such uh, an, an attack. So, um, from the get go, the people that will be involved, be, of course, those uh, security agencies and, of course, the military and, of course, paramilitary, because you're going to need numbers and bodies on the ground. Um, you're also going to need to bring together the health professionals that are involved in that particular field. Yes? Hello? We uh, don't want the participant to make a team so that you will not come Oh, okay, fight. okay. I thought we were just opening it up. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, go I ahead. Go ahead. For them to okay, okay. Yes. And see what they are saying. Yes. Like, yes. If, is, yes. if we just give them everything, if they go for the exam, they might forget too many things to say. But if they make a team, you know, they will at least, they will first of all, remember the things they said. Before the NASA remembering what Chief Tito said. So I want them to make a attempt, then you can come in and fine tune what they said. Uh, Except okay. there's no volunteer here, then. I wasn't hearing just... anybody after you said it, so I thought you were talking generally. No, it's they are the ones so are the, those people going for exam. Dr. Chipola have really All tried. right, let them go ahead then. Let them uh, go ahead. Dr. Ago, Dr. Marian, we've not heard your voice. Dr. Yahaya, we've not heard your voice on this matter. People should just make a tent. Some people okay, man. just so man for the team. For the team. Um okay, Dr. Yeah, okay, because you have the floor, sir. Dr. Jibola, please go ahead. I'm a bit in a noisy place. Sorry. Oh, okay, 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 can okay, I make a tent? Okay. So, so sorry. Good morning, teachers and colleagues. I just thought of the teams that we can make. Uh the first one we identified the stakeholders and experts. Some of the stakeholders and experts I thought of, like the public health officials, the which involve the epidemiologists, infectious disease, uh, part of sort of things like that. And then we needed uh, uh, emergency physicians and those that work in critical care unit, the nurses and the physicians and even the pharmacists. And then we tried and make another team, we'll call them emergency response teams. The paramedics, we involve paramedics, the firefighters and stuff like that. And then we needed the law enforcement members like the police, road safety, 
the immigration, the custom, because some of the the bioterrorism it may may be inter international. So we may need this kind of individuals and then the laboratory personnel where we'll be taking the samples and then trying to identify the active uh, ingredient in the from the samples and the possible agents that are there. Then the communications guys, social media, old, both printed media, social media, old media, and the new medias that will be helping us disseminating the information. And then we liars with the state governments like in Nigeria, almost every state government it has emergency, state emergency management agency or something like that. So we involve uh, those team of individuals. So these are the team members I thought of. Thank you, Dr. Dahatu. Thank you so much. Then the um always remember you guys will need money. So yes. the financial minister, because this will not come from your pocket. Money have to be moving really fast. So financial minister of both the state to the local government and the in federal, if depend on the extent of the bioterrorism. Never forget your secretaries, people that will document all that will be happening. Um then the CMDs of different hospitals, because now of many victims, you need to involve all of them. Even churches, schools. I remember when then there are some flood issues, some of the some of the victims and some terrorism issues in the north. Some of the victims start to start staying in churches, mosques, and there are some other safe places. So these guys have to come in, the traditional rulers and all, they all have to come in. So these are the basic, these are the people that must be among the team. Chief Chitus, I know this is your your forte. Please, can you fine tune all that being said? Yeah, I, I think the speaker have done well. Uh, um, like I was saying earlier, it's, um, you need to start with the intelligence report about the possible bioterror bi um, um, event may come through one of the uh, defense mechanisms of the country, either the army, the navy, the air force, or from intelligence from the security agents. Okay, so you're going to involve them at various levels, particularly the defense system, that is the army, the Navy, the Air Force, uh, because they will form mainly the bodies uh, on the ground. Um, also, based on the possible type of agent that will be used for the bioterrorism, you have to bring in experts in that particular uh, field, okay? Um, for instance, if you're dealing with something like uh, anthrax, you're gonna have to bring in chest physicians, GI physician, and of course, dermatologists and all of that into the mix. Um, also, if it's some, if it's an agent that has that can protect people involved, uh, people that are involved in that. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, your immunologist, the um, agencies in charge of keeping these vaccines, transporting these vaccines, and all of that have to be involved. That is why you're going to have to involve the Ministry of Health as a whole. Because they have agencies within that thing for different parts of the uh, different thing. Because they're going to have to immunize everybody that is going to help to deal with it. So all those your bodies on ground. But then, of course, you need to get protective wear for all these people. So you're going to have to, uh, you know, get the agency within the Ministry of Health that involved with that. Then, of course, we have the NCDC. Um, uh, uh, and they should be involved. They are an agency.
Prof, sir. You can go ahead, sir. Come on, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I appreciate comments from everyone. Yeah, so it's important that um, candidates should understand that they should not make a station or the comments in the station vague. Yes, you mentioned, just to be precise, you were talking about a team. I think in exam setting, the candidate will do well if you can mention specifically the team is referring to. For example, if you're making a comment that, oh, okay, we'll involve the security unit as a candidate, compared to a candidate that says it's going to involve DSS. Yeah, you know, DSS is more important when it becomes, when it's something that is a threat, at least to a community. DSS will do more than just informing the police. Okay? Uh, actually, it's a national issue. Number two is um, we involve community experts and people in the community care. But if you mention NCD, NCDC, we all know that that is the real body that is involved in what? So that, as in, I'm just trying to say in the exam, yeah, you have the idea, but if it would be the best, if you can mention the agency, the actual agency you're going to write to, if you're writing as a CMD that this is so trade to report you got, who and who will you write to? You won't just carry paper and write uh, to community physician to where you, you have to specify the agencies you are describing. You get what I mean? Yeah. Just to make you everything you're saying is correct, is correct, but if you can put actual name of the agency in the exam, it will carry stronger weight. If you talk about oh, the labs we will use and all that, if you there's a national lab we all use now, right? And we have a DG of that lab. I can't just remember the name, but we have a DG of a particular national lab, research lab and research something that they run all this um, infectious disease and all the emerging disease. Like when we're doing COVID, in the COVID period, there are specific agencies, specific labs that were used. If you can mention all this, I'm telling you, it carries stronger with, with terrorism or emergencies not new to our society. And there is a protocol and guide they follow. So just think about the way they did COVID, who and who were involved. It will help you to concretize your team and how to next step of how to move. Thank you. Yeah, NEMA, yes. National, um, yeah. Dr. Dibola just mentioned the lab, NEMA. That is the specific lab you would take things to, and you know. Just wanted to just make sure that we have it well fashioned out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I don't know if uh, Chief Chitu is back. Um, yeah, sorry, I had network issues. Okay, sir. Just let me And then we appear. I think Prof has laid out that you need the uh, security agencies, particularly the state security, and of course, the defense system, that's the uh, Army, Navy, Air Force. Okay, then you need. Uh, the Ministry of Health and its agencies involved in other vaccination, its affiliates such as the NCDC and things like that. You need professionals in, uh, that will be dealing with issues that may come about as, that, as a result of that bioterrorism. So you're going to need uh, uh, professionals in that particular realm. So you have to mention specific uh, specialties that may help out because they may mention an agent, a particular agent. And if you know about that agent, you know the uh, different uh, organ systems they affect, you know, the different specialties you may need to bring in. And of course, community leaders, uh, either religious or traditional, and um, uh, of course, volunteers, both locally and uh, internationally. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That yes. Are you done, Chief? Because I don't know. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you sir. sir. I don't know if there are any more comments from our facilitators. Then um, that can close the class. Any comments from our facilitators? So, thank you, Doctor Ago. Thank you, Doctor Jibola Sanda. Thank you, Doctor. 
Yahaya for anchoring this class. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I think um, Chief Chitu 